Now in clause number four, which is context, it talks about understanding the organization and its context, its background, what business it's in, the internal and external issues which are relevant to its purpose and that affects its ability to achieve intended outcomes of ISMS. So what we're, what we're actually asking is that we should look around the organization and look at all those factors which could affect the ISMS and its achievement or could be hindrances in the achievement of the ISMS. Now, in context, we are also asked in clause number four about needs and expectations of interested parties. And interested parties is a term used in 27001, and it could be any party or entity which has a legal, regulatory, or contractual obligation or relationship with our organization, which is trying to implement ISMS. And we're also asked in clause number four to look at scope, which is the boundaries and interfaces and dependencies on different entities. So, um, so since clause number four is the first clause, we're, we're asked to understand the context of the organization with respect to stakeholders and dependencies and the linkages. Now, the next clause is clause number five. And uh, this is also a mandatory clause, and it refers to leadership and commitment, a very, very important perspective and, and aspect of ISMS 27001. And in this, we are asked, first of all, about policy and objectives. Uh, so policy and objectives should be established and should be compatible with the strategic direction of the organization. And obviously, to align the policy and objectives, we need to understand what the strategic direction of the organization actually is. And that also links up with the context, which we talked about in clause number four. And then integrating ISMS into the organizational processes. So this is something that will be driven by the leadership because whenever there's a process and there's so many processes in the entire organization, there's business processes, and we need to embed ISMS into the organization processes. And then resources for ISMS should be available, should be made available. Continuing with leadership and commitment, we talk about communicating the importance of the ISMS, because if the importance of ISMS is not communicated by the leadership, then the organization and its staff will not give it essential and, and the important priority in order to execute the information security management system. And then ensuring ISMS achieves the intended outcome. So squarely, the responsibility for achieving the ISMS is placed on the leadership. And uh, which is part of the commitment. And then directing and supporting persons. So that's a management role where you're directing people and directing staff and, and, and the leadership is directing the organization to achieve the ISMS and promoting continual improvement. So it's an ongoing commitment and it's, it's a lot about continual improvement because security is a moving target. And then you, uh, we must assign and communicate roles and responsibilities and authorities so that there is a structure to the ISMS and the empowerment and delegation and authority is, is all uh, taken care of and addressed. And then there's planning, which is clause number six. So addressing organizational risks and opportunities and preventing or reducing undesired effects, which is about risk management. We're touching risk management here. So ensure that risk assessment is conducted, identify, analyze, and evaluate risks, and ensure that risk treatment is effective. So in the planning, we're, we're uh, looking at the risks and, and placing the responsibility um, of the risks as a, as a risk management activity as a mandatory requirement in clause number six in, as part of planning. And then planning looks at ensuring information security objectives are measurable, are communicated, and uh, the objectives um, should determine what will be done, what resources will be required, who will be responsible to achieve the information security objectives, when the objectives will be completed or done, so we're talking about timeline, and how to evaluate the results. So altogether, uh, clause four, five, and six, which was um, a, a very important part because we're talk talking about the scope we're talking about uh, the planning, and uh, we're talking about leadership and commitment and the context of the organization. So these are all very important elements 
which are part of the mandatory clauses 4, 5, and 6 of ISMS. Thank you.